Wednesday edition of What Chaos. Breaking news in the NHL. Linus Olmark's RAR playlist is up to 105 likes, and he continues to add songs to it. I love uh, we the, uh, the Chaos Influence. The Nothing for, for P Word. Yeah. Nothing for P Word playlist was quickly uncovered. After uh, after the interview with Olmark and Swayman went live yesterday, and it wasn't hard because he just didn't put he doesn't have any of his playlists under private. There, uh, some of them are just in Swedish, and yep. people were able to translate it, and they found the playlist. Do you think that Rar was in Swedish or English? It could Ooh. be a cognate. Ooh, that's a good question. You know what a cognate is? It's something that translates regardless of language. Correct. Nice. Such as, do you have examples? Taxi is like the most common one. I, I feel like it's just like things that sound like what what like the natural sound is. Isn't that onomatopoeia? Sure. This is not a uh, word podcast. Apparently not. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, it, if you run down the list of Linus Allmark's like playlists on Spotify, the ones that we talk about like have lots of likes, and the ones that were left unchecked, uh, no likes. So huge thanks bump. to everybody who listened and then immediately went to Linus Allmark's playlists and uh, and let them know you said what's up. We do have actual uh, breaking news in the NHL. Three on three overtime is no good? Question mark. Apparently, apparently it's uh it's on the docket of things that need to be fixed. Apparently the GM meetings I in Arizona, Sean, why aren't you at that? You didn't send me. <laughs> uh, I have seen a <laughs> lot of like people. Sean's attitude today. <laughs> uh, I have seen a lot of people kind of turning on three on three overtime it, a little bit as of, uh, as of recently where uh, a lot of complaints about guys just like circling back and killing too much time in the other end of the ice. And, Let me give it to you yeah. from Greg Wyshynski. If they're meeting Tuesday in Toronto, league general managers, blah, 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 potential tweaks, blah, 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 blah. quote, the purpose of overtime is to end the game. And we need to make sure that continues to progress. Arizona Coyotes general manager Bill Armstrong said, blah, 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 blah. Colin Campbell said the league still supports three on three. Blah, 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 blah. Quote, we haven't gotten to whether or not it should uh, no longer, it, it should be longer or whether we should get rid of the shootout. We don't mind the format. The GMs instead focused on how to create more scoring chances during three on three, which has become more meticulous and less chaotic in its nine years of existence. The biggest gripe players possess the puck for too long outside the attacking zone. GMs discuss a variety of concepts, including restricting a team from skating back into its own zone, almost creating a half-court version of three-on-three -three overtime. There's also been talk about putting a timer on players to ensure that they clear their defensive zone quickly instead of regrouping there. Yeah, so uh, the biggest, you know, the biggest, like, suggestion for three-on-three -three overtime, because if you go to the, the Bill Armstrong quote, He's like, the purpose of three-on-three -three overtime is to end the game before a shootout. Well, the obvious pushback on that is, well, then just make it 10 minutes. And mm -hmm. that's what people have been saying for a long time. But making it 10 minutes doesn't necessarily prevent what they're talking about there in that later quote, which is kind of just hanging around with the puck, doing nothing uh, in the neutral zone or in the defensive zone. So I kind of do like the idea of turning it into a somewhat like half-court style three-on-three. I have no problem with the regrouping. Your best and fastest players are always out there. So you make sure it's just one great push after another. And it's not always going to be back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It's chance. Really good chance. Really good chance. And there's like 12 of those. And within the first 12 of those, typically, you if you don't get a goal, you get some outrageous action mm -hmm. i think that just pushing for it to be 
sloppier is kind of silly because the big thing when they implemented three on three was like, we're trying to not get too far away from the game. And people were like, well, you're taking two people off the ice. You're getting so far away from it. So now if you don't let players regroup and basically go about this as wisely as they can, you're just putting a worse product out there. I don't necessarily think that it needs to be fixed. Like some, some three on three overtimes are kind of shitty, but guess what? Some NHL games, full games are kind of shitty. It just kind of happens. You're going to not going to get the same product every single time. I don't necessarily think that it needs to be fixed. I also like, I don't hate considering ways that it can be improved either. Of everything that they outlined there, I do think the defensive zone shot clock is pretty interesting. Is that's just, it's or I should say it's like an eight second rule. So that's just like you got to cross the defensive line. Got to get out. Okay. Pro- probably you got to bring the puck past your blue line after X amount of time. I, I think that the real problem is it's not fixing three on three over time. It's the thing that needs to be addressed, and this is long needed to be addressed, is incentivizing teams to win in regulation and then incentivizing them if you can incentivizing them further to win in overtime rather than a shootout you have to like i i don't understand why I mean, the NHL doesn't have the three two one point system right what, what's the incentive but there is incentive that regulation or overtime wins i guess for like tiebreaker purposes, yeah. but I mean points in the standings. Uh, it just makes so much sense to go three, two, one. Yeah, I uh, so I watch a lot of Major League Soccer, and they do three for a win, mm-hmm. one for a draw. And as hockey season started up again, I was like, "How does the NHL does not, not do this? It exists in international <laughs> hockey. Like it, it exists so many places. It just doesn't make sense." to count an overtime win the same as a regulation win. And it gives no incentive for a team to play hard in the last minute of, of the third period when you can just punt to overtime. Uh, let me ask you this. Cause I saw this in a, um, in a suggestion to the fixing three on three overtime. Would you like the idea of eliminating sudden death and just going with, we're going to play five minutes of three on three and whoever scores more goals in that period wins. My gut instinct is yes, but I think more thought would need to be put into it as far as like, what does pulling the goalie in three on three look like? Like, Is that just really fucking stupid? If you've got like a four on three situation Mm -hmm. and you're like, also, you know what? You know, the reason I have to say no is if you go to overtime and lose six to two in overtime that's fucking weird it is very that's weird. really weird uh it so, needs to be a, a fi- the final the f o t on the ticker always needs to see a difference of one <laughs> that's fair well i mean that's part of the reason why i'm also giving a hard no to that i think it's an interesting idea and it would lead to some crazy finishes towards the end of games but it, it brings up too many complications like goal differential it, like playing uh, yeah. three on three overtime into the goal differential would be tough, but you would also need to figure out how to to quantify like players scoring in three on three because you could throw your best players out there and they could score like three goals in in overtime, and what do they get three goals on the stat sheet for their season? That's going to inflate stats like crazy, and you're going to have guys who are on teams that go to overtime That's way so more true. just inflate their goal totals. You know what it is? It's the closer on a shitty team <laughs> yeah, has that's right. a has more saves than the closer on the good team because they're we're a baseball podcast, games. and like closers on good teams typically are winning by three, four, five, six runs instead of one or two every single night i i guess like the easy solution to both of those problems would be to uh you know if your team scores more goals in the five minutes you it's basically like a shootout like if you score more goals you just get credit for one goal that's attributed to nobody in, in the final score but i don't know I, I just don't think it's worth it i also like the idea I, I like the sudden death like the explosion of the goal ending the game what if you did um like i don't know like elimination rules to keep it so you can't win by more than one goal. If say we're playing overtime three on three, I score on you and then I score on you again. 
instead of me getting another goal, I get to choose which of your guys can't play the rest of the game. That's that's a cool idea. Do you like, Buddy, you I'm mean, scoring twice and choosing the goalies of, every time. You mean can't play the rest of the game or like they have to remove a player from the ice because you can No, do we're not taking fuckers like <laughs> off the ice completely because that – but uh, my plan would be to pepper in three quick ones, remove both of your goalies, and they don't have an e-bug in time, and then I just like – score a bajillion goals you're not a video game guy but honestly uh i like the idea of turning nhl overtime into like a 5v5 kind of like death match kind of thing whereas if your team scores a goal the other team loses a player from their five and then you play a five on four power play and you just keep going until uh an entire team's players are eliminated from the ice imagine like a 1v5 in, clutching uh, up in, in an nhl overtime that would be unreal so i used to be a video game guy because i used to be a child and uh we played nhl hits did you ever play nhl hits? i did yeah you know what happened if you want to fight uh yeah that player could not come back to the game the guy's out yeah guy don't play anymore he lost yeah imagine you uh i i just love the idea of like a, a guy uh like somebody on the bruins like 1v5ing the buffalo mm. sabers this isn't a bruins podcast yeah it's a buffalo sabers podcast it's an oilers podcast uh we should make a presentation on how we have weighed in on this three on three thing which has been a huge ass stack of papers that really have nothing to do with the players regrouping sort of thing. Yeah. And be like, hey, like we fixed the problem. Do you ever play NHL hits? <laughs> yeah, like we have we have to uh we have to put together boardroom NHL boardroom presentations. I've already I have like 20, you know that like I've been like fucking pushing this. I a dream for this show at some point is to get with certain NHL executives and just Show them some thoughts we have. Maybe we should just do, do that things as, on our mind. We should just do that as a video series, like NHL boardroom presentations, fixing the game. So fixing the game was yeah. the name for it. Uh, I like that. It is. It's very uh, like at home content creator, which mm -hmm. I'm not uh, slagging at all. But are we having somebody play somebody, or are we just? I, I think that it would just be us, and we're facing the camera and. The point of view is yeah, like point like, of view. You're Gary view. Bettman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think um, we could do this. Sean, yeah. can you make that for us? <laughs> yeah, Sean, make it happen. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Sean, type it into uh, Chat GPT and see what Sean, it comes up with. Do what if uh, DJ and Pete Doppelganger did a really nice video series? I like well, that we're hitting the point of the podcast where we're just barking commands at, at Sean yeah. off screen. I do have a fucking file like with a bunch of those ideas so let's just start bringing them out uh let me tell you it's uh it's sad times for your buffalo sabers because uh i believe the preseason most overrated team in the nhl i say that very lovingly uh, might not end up having a great season <laughs> it Tate cer Thompson, certainly looks that way the wrist not so good they get smoked by the bruins last night five three five two five two Bruins that, scored five straight goals. Sabres got the last right. Two. That that was a little more smoky than the five two score would reflect. Five Correct, two yeah. sounds like ah oh, maybe it got away from them for a second, got away from them for a while. Yeah, uh, we we didn't get a chance to watch that game because we were at a concert. We don't watch the games. We, that's right. I haven't watched a single hockey game since we started this. <laughs> I've I've just improvised all of my like. Skinner should have made that save. Total guess. Nice. And people have been like, kind of on the right. money though. Yeah. Should have, yeah. It just shows how much we know the game. I've like, never watched hockey ever. I've I used to play NHL Hits, which is a hockey video game, which is how I know so much. I mean, it it just really shows that you got a real general knack for for the game and understanding it. You you know exactly what's happening without even watching. I had a friend. I, I, there's an argument to be made that like if you need to watch the games to understand what's going on in the NHL, you're not a real fan. I love that. That kind of goes hand in hand with the like, oh, you need goals in hockey? <laughs> Cute. You know what I need? Hockey. <laughs> I just like when the guys are I just playing. Like, I just like when they're wearing all that stuff. I like when they're playing. I like them taking strides. I like. You know what I like? We should do. We did this with baseball on uh, our other podcast brunch. We did a list of our uh, favorite baseball things. Mm -hmm. And it was like, yours was like, the smell when you walk into the park. One yeah. of mine was uh, that they 
Sean, you'll like this, that they uh, wet the dirt before the game. <laughs> What's going on? With- why? Why would that be something that I specifically? Because you're a baseball like, dork. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, that, like, I, mean, I that bet that you true. go to like I bet you go to baseball games and you see that shit and you're like, ah, oh, it's a good hose they got on there. No, I'm a big chalk guy. Like when they get those oh, lines laid down, oh, that yeah. shot. I can pinch on as a shot guy for sure. <laughs> you know what? Uh, the number one baseball thing for this is, which kind of started all of our baseball talk on brunch, was uh, thinking too. You know when a guy's thinking too. Oh, yeah. the, the oh, mo- yeah. the, you can pinpoint the moment a guy is like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking too. I, I like when someone laces one and is thinking <laughs> too. <laughs> yes. Imagine Hell, yeah. lacing one and being like, I, sometimes when you lace one, you're thinking three. If you got the, if you got the, the Jets. You lace one down the right. This is a Bruins podcast. You lace one down the right field line. This could be trouble. That, oh, yes. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, <laughs> this God. one could be trouble. And like as long as it's not Vlad Guerrero in right field, <laughs> just go for it. But I also put this in my favorite baseball things. When a right fielder makes a throw that doesn't matter, that like the guy doesn't go from second to third. But the right fielder still does a just in fucking case you were, and it's the most incredible. <laughs> Don't even think about it's the it. The most incredible throw. I also like when the catcher hops up. Uh, this was more like little league. I played catcher, and I would do this all the time. If uh, somebody took a lead off first ever once the pitch was th- or like increased their lead, I'd hop up and go like fucking get back there. Both of those are intimidation tactics. Like the right fielder throw to second base when yeah. the guy doesn't even go. It's yeah. like, yeah, just for next time, you know what kind of hose I got out here. What's the I'm gonna be a great host? What's the hockey version of that? That intimidation tactics that isn't quite things coming to blows. The one thing I can think of is uh the it's like a nice friendly push in front of the net. You know, when it, if a goalie makes a save and players kind of close in on yeah. him in case there's a rebound, there's always some shoving. Some guys get there and they just glide in and both the defenseman and the forward do like a kind of like I, ease into each other. The first thing that came to my mind is like when, when somebody tries to uh, stir things up and the other guy just doesn't even respond or kind of laughs in his face. Like that is the most intimidating thing that can happen in hockey. It's like you're trying to get rattle that guy's cage and he is loving every second of it and not really paying you uh, a cent of his time. Sean, what's your favorite intimidation tactic in hockey? Um, I think when there's a bunch of stuff going on in front of the net and the goalie on the other end just skates towards. Like oh, oh yes. Yes. that's yes. a great answer. Yeah. Number here, they, they just like go out wide yeah, and just, just like, there. let me get a different angle on this. Let yep. me take a look at that. Mm, <laughs> don't like that. Don't, the opposite of that. And some players, I, I will name no names. Some players whom I loved did this. There's a bit of a scrum going on, and you just kind of furrow your brow, sk- keep like seven feet away from it at all times, but do the like, I don't like what I'm seeing in there. <laughs> like everybody else is pushing each other, and, and I'm mad too. You're all monitoring. So we're all, so we're all being tough here. Uh, oh, yeah, that's man. not bad. Uh, back to the the three on three thing. The uh, <laughs> back to nut savers. No, no, no. It's it's like sort of. We, you know what you're doing. You're regrouping. We are regrouping, but no, it's it's like it's related to what you we have were eight just seconds about. to finish your thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the twisting the uh, like. Oh, you really like sudden death. Just so you don't like hockey. Mm-hmm. But like, why why have one goal when you could have five? You really you like the goal that ends the hockey game. Couldn't be me. I like hockey so much. I want the game to continue no matter what. Yes. Yeah. So I think I like that being the pushback on uh, on people who will be like, no, keep sudden death. You have to keep sudden death. I'm, and now that's that coming from me. Back in said. the overtime conversation, <laughs> I think uh, a great way to do it. People uh, were saying before initially, like, all right, so why don't you start four on four and then take away one and make it three on three oh, and right, you keep yeah. taking them away and that was always kind of a sexy idea maybe 10 years ago or whatever i say to really test their metal you add a player <laughs> yes. every five minutes and at some point it's like there is there's 16 of us aside out here right now this is a terrible time 
Can one of you just like let in a goal, please? <laughs> Imagine so many big people on the ice at the same time. It would be like a uh, Rockefeller Center when we did the uh, the skate. Yeah, we did. We skated at Rockefeller Center a couple of years ago. Not to it, brag, we have connections. There was good like, like that. Four thousand people on the ice, mm. and you you can't really go anywhere. And so that would be an NHL game. I kind of like that idea. And when we skated on Rockefeller Center, that was a pretty uh, physical. Bumping into each other, uh, game two. An nice. old man, <laughs> an old man tried to say hi to you and just absolutely ate it. He was like, Tough "Hi, scene. I just want to say I really appreciate your work, and I think that." And I was like, "What, huh?" And then he bumped <laughs> into somebody and fell down. <laughs> it was incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. It was incredible. Pete loved it. All right, back to uh, I was gonna think of like what was the sh- show show topic like five episodes ago that we could just loop back to. Also, I kept saying eight seconds. Eight seconds would be way too long way of too a long. like regrouping. Like imagine if you went back and regrouped and the official was like, All right, boys, <laughs> you got eight <laughs> seconds. One misses like it should be what? Like it, it five can't, max? It can't be in the hands of the refs because like Wes McCauley would just get way too into it. Oh yeah. He would he would cheese it up way, way too much. What if uh, Connor Bedard was one of the uh, oh, no. people? And it, who is the who was the mic'd up ref for I, that? I opening? don't know. Who is the uh, the the bell of the ball <laughs> that day? Just ESPN's favorite. Sabers not looking so hot. They lose five two in a game in which they surrender the first five goals, then score a couple, lose their young stud center Tage Thompson. Yeah, it's, for a uh, while. Yeah, for a significant period of time, we don't know what it is. He got injured twice in that game. Took Charlie McAvoy's skate to uh, his leg, got patched up, came back in the game, then took a shot off his wrist. The shot off the wrist is what took him out and will keep him out. It's I feel so bad for the Sabres and the Sabres fans because this was the year. We talked about it before uh, for like forever, basically the entire summer. This is the Sabres year. Everybody was on the bandwagon. The Sabres fans were like, they got to make the playoffs this year. They had the longest NHL drought, uh, postseason drought. And it just has gone extremely poorly out of the gate. Bunch of guys getting hurt. Tage Thompson's the latest. Even even the stuff that we thought they would be awesome at, like in terms of the scoring and output, like their, their offense hasn't been as good as we anticipated. Now they lose probably their best goal scorer. And it's... It, it's looking really tough for a team that already was towards the bottom of the Atlantic and now is without their, their, their probably their biggest player. Can I well, say literally their biggest player? Sean, but. you don't want to hear this. You're a Sabres fan. This is going to be the episode where we talk to Sean the most for some reason. Sorry. Uh, it's been a busy week for all of us. So we're just going to dump everything on Sean. But as a Sabres fan, you probably don't want to hear this. Just wait. It's all good. Like, it's just not going to happen this year. And we talked with Frank Vetrano about how you go from rebuilding to there suddenly. And sometimes it happens a little quicker than you would think. I think that maybe we were hoping it would happen quicker for the Sabres than it actually would. This kind of seems sort of natural-ish in the progression. Like they still well, don't necessarily know that they have a stud goaltender long term. They've got some fantastic defensemen who still don't have their, I forget what the Denny Potvin thing was. I think he said it was like uh, 200 games or something like that. Uh, that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, Not, g- guys do come in and make an impact quicker. And and just because like the, the position of defenseman has changed so much. It's, a, it's pretty much forward. Yeah, so, exactly. Like, that doesn't exist anymore. But like what really, what does exist on a player level is, is the sophomore slump. Like, the sophomore slump is a real thing that affects players. I think that it's something that can affect teams, too. Like, for all intents and purposes, the Buffalo Sabres last year were in their quote-unquote rookie year because it was the first year that they were, like, a really fun team, a competitive team, a team that people were willing to take seriously. And this is their sophomore year, and I think that there is potential for a sophomore slump. I'm not saying that, like, this season can't get better or this season is dead already but clearly there's still some stuff going on there that needs to be addressed and they're not fully galvanized oh for lack of a better term but i don't know there is a better term but i but i 
said at the beginning of the season when I was talking to, I think, our, our friend Ben Mathewson, who was like, the Sabres need to make the playoffs this year. And I said, but do they really? Like, if they don't make the playoffs this year, what changes? The, that's, ex that's, so that's exactly what I'm saying. Right? Yeah, like their roster is still really young. And yeah, you'd like the, for them to make the playoffs this year for several reasons. One of which being that like they're not paying their best guys a whole lot of money yet. So you would like to capitalize within that window. But like them, them fumbling this year or whatever you want to say, if this year continues down this path, nothing really changes because they still have a bunch of really good young players. They're still learning how to be a team, a competitive team. And I think that they're going to figure it out. Yeah. So like they've got 14, 15, 16 million dollars coming off the books at the end of this year. And then they have, geez, the jump from for power from a million to eight and a half, the jump from Darlene from six to 11, like they can swallow what they're about to take on. And like, I, they're not going to get into the situation Boston was in this summer where they're like, okay, well now we're giving this guy a huge raise and now we're paying these things. And now like, shit, you know what? We got to just pay Taylor Hall to go away. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, they're not going to be in that position. They're just, their younger guys are going to get a little more experience. Their stud guys who are still young but on huge contracts are not going to be albatrosses to their cap figure. I think that uh, like next year they're going to be better than this. Well, yeah, I mean, like they they have the the sort of luxury that most of their best players and most of their impact players are still either in their prime or about to enter their prime. And they've still got a pretty good prospect system. Like they still got guys that are either rookies this year or in the system that, like you said, are going to get more opportunity and are probably going to get better. I mean, you've got Zach Benson who hasn't played for much of this year to begin with, but had like a great camp. Matt Savoy is it just kind of came up a lot last week. Didn't play much, but uh, I, I'm, I, I still think that like there's a lot of reason to be optimistic and to be excited about the Sabres. Unfortunately, it's just not really they're not really delivering on the hype. Essentially, like the Detroit Red Wings are, are what we thought the Sabres were going to be. Great point. You know what's delivering on the hype is Olipop. Ooh, it's delivering always. delivering on the fiber as well because there is dietary fiber in that. And I don't know how Olipop feels about us honing in on the regularity aspect of their beverage. Hey, if you got it. If you flaunt got it, it, flaunt it. And we've all been there as Americans. Most of us have had digestive issues at points. And God, if it ain't stressful when you're not regular. There's so many things about our life that can be in flux. Why make your movements one of them? Here's what you can do. This is not like a ma I'm not like talking this like it's a medicine. I'm hucking it like it's a great drink. It's a delicious drink. It has drink. some incredible benefits. It's Olipop. It is a prebiotic soda that comes in all the flavors you want. Your classic cola, your root beer, your strawberry vanilla, which I'll be honest, I belonged on Linus Olmark's playlist for a second because I was too scared to try a strawberry vanilla flavor because I'd never thought of that combination before. But then when you think about it, it's like a strawberries and cream thing. You tap into it. Buddy, it's a strawberries and cream thing. Berries and cream? Berries and cream. Famously, an, another advert, a different advertisement. <laughs> that's right. I'm a little boy who likes berries and cream. Yes. A little lad or a little boy? A little lad. That's right. A little that's lad. Right. That was, uh, were they doing a, like an Irish take? I don't on, know what that was. On which, 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 which service was that for? Mm. Berries and cream, berries and cream. I'm a little lad. Like we don't need to promote another. It was, I think it was a fast food place, correct? No. It was like At any candy. Rate, Olipop is can of delicious stuff. <laughs> Barely any sugar in it. You got five grams or under in each can. And as I said, it's a prebiotic soda, so it's going to make you regular. If you use promo code CHAOS on drinkolipop.com, you're going to get 20% off your order. And you can also find it in over 22 thousand stores across America. So go to over 22,000 stores and get your Olipop. Uh, Got to point out, I'm wearing my Tage Thompson jersey mm -hmm. today just out of uh, respect and tribute. RIP to the homie. Mm -hmm. um, but this is something that we've talked about several times off the podcast. Yeah, you got one too. This is in a, uh, this is a authentic Tage Thompson jersey, not to brag, but 
it uh we're talking about this we've talked about the structure of nhl jerseys authentics and how awkward and like kind of cumbersome they can be with the crest like it's it's a solid crest and if you sit down it just kind of it sits so awkwardly it's it's so stiff and it can be huge it like digs into your waistline i don't know like i think that I'm, I'm not so putting drink a, all no, drink. <laughs> I'm not putting a, a ton of faith into fanatics to do anything innovative in a, in a positive way, but like I would really like to see a sort of more casual hockey jersey for fans to wear in like a, in a casual situation. The thing that frustrates me about both of those jerseys is like the part that is the block is the same color as the jersey. Like there's oh, no that doesn't bother me. Well, but what I'm saying is there's no real reason for it to be a giant patch. Like you could just embroider the gold and white. Oh yes, yes, true, yes. Instead of having a giant patch like that. That yeah, is true. It would move so much better. It would fall on your right. Could you just hold this Pete just next to you? Compare is that the same size? Are those Oh, this Because my way, feel, the the, Oilers my, my Oilers one feels gigantic, but that looks huge on you still. Yeah. It, it, the 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 circle crest is huge. And I just want to see uh, – one of the things that I, I want to see is, um, like, more elastic around the wrists so that it's it's not so droopy. But I don't know. That's, uh, that's We should get thoughts. a merchandise sponsor and, like, customize our own jerseys. Not, like, what's on it. Who cares? But just, like, the fit and yes. the feel. And it would probably end up being very George Costanza uh, cotton, cotton. <laughs> yeah. when he has the uh, – Yankees out there looking like penguins. Uh, speaking of uh, jerseys, uh, we'd like to give a salute to uh, the fashion police because they were called and had to work long hours this week. The PWHL unveiling their jerseys for the forthcoming season. And the deal is, folks, before you freak out and call the fashion police, even though we're calling the fashion police, it's for one season while they sort everything out and that they're they're doing a Washington football team. Yeah. It's for a season while they sort everything out and then comes the good thing. It's just that this all looks so boring. Yeah, I mean, so if you can't see it if you're listening on podcast forums, there are how many teams are there? 6? Six? 6 I believe, yeah. 6 teams um and each jersey has the exact same template and there it's just like the the city name in diagonal letters across the front and uh, that's it. That's the design. It's very, uh, very like EASHL sort of entry level uniforms, very high school like they're high school, their high school jerseys. Um, and I like, I agree, like, sure. It's a one year thing, maybe not worth freaking out over or whatever, but like, it's the first year. This is the league trying to get off the ground. It's women's hockey, which like, you know, to be fair, like people have been, looking for reasons to to dump all over women's hockey for years and they're fighting for legitimacy this is not the way you want to start if you're the PWHL and like it's sort of inexcusable yeah i thought i thought of putting the kibosh on us even doing this topic cuz i was like i don't want the first time we talk about this league to be like uh bad but like but we're talking about how they're be, standing in their own way. Right, like right. They, they they don't even have team names or logos, which is why they're doing the team names across the front of the jersey. If you're launching a league, it's like the bare minimum to have team names. Yeah. It's, it's such a bad look. It's so, it's so unserious. Unserious is a good way of putting it. And... Like, we've talked about it. Like, we're excited to get to games. We want to, like, take our nephews to games where it's, like, not going to be a bajillion dollars and they can be close and they mm -hmm. can see the game and get to see what hockey is and everything. I want there to be all of the cool shit and all the fixings. Well, that's the thing. Like, it, I want to see, I want to see it succeed. I want to see a women's league succeed because the game is awesome. Like, if you watch it at the international level, or I mean, you just watch the game. Period. I know that the leagues haven't been e extremely profitable, and and uh, I know that they've been popular. But like, the the product is good. 
So there is room for this league to exist and succeed. You have to, it just has to be put in a position to succeed and to put in a position for people to take it seriously. And this is a very poor start. Sean, raise your point that you made earlier today about just taking on the NWHL branding. Well, oh yeah. I mean the, the, what the PHL prior oh, I'm sorry. was the, yeah, like the Buffalo Buttes, the, the Boston pride, Minnesota white caps, Toronto six, like they were really dope. They had, this, yeah. they had, they had really dope branding and really dope jerseys. And it's like the Riveters had yeah. good jerseys yeah. too. Yeah. Like it's just, it's such a step backwards in a, in an area where you would imagine that they wouldn't need to take a step the, backwards. The thing that frustrates me too, is that like, at the very least, you could have, and they did it kind of with Boston, but like I wish they would have done these jerseys in colors like from the cities. Because like the Boston jersey, for example, is green and white for the audio listeners. It, yeah. Like wearing that to a Celtics game, hard as fuck. True. Yeah. That would be hard. But like n most of them, like Montreal has the Senators colors. Like it, it's, yeah, it, it's I could, very you, weird. You couldn't me. guess based on the colors where really but even any of those like the boston one if you were to say guess any of those i see that and i say minnesota right because they have wild uh or like north dakota oh, or true, something yeah. like that mm -hmm. just like something in that area north north dakota, dakota, famously famously the, the, in minnesota you no know, i'm saying like, <laughs> that, like i know what you're so saying so it looks like a minnesota north stars jersey and it looks like a college jersey of north dakota so anywhere in the uh the northwest the say, ottawa jerseys look like Devils jerseys, just straight Mid up North like North Devils yeah. jerseys. I mean, I will say, I, I think that like the 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 home jerseys, the colorful jerseys, like they're pretty they're pretty good. Like they look like good base jerseys. It's just the the generic uh, city branding across the 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 front is just like very uninspiring, very minimalistic, very boring. Yeah. Uh, but like the colors are are solid. You if know, we should get one of these teams just had these jerseys. I think they would be awesome. Correct. It's like the Rangers yeah. jerseys. Mm -hmm. Like they're clean, but it's just. It looks like they whoever did this didn't care. You know that kid on Instagram who does like uh, logo redesigns for teams. She'll have like uh, like whatever the logo is above, and it'll be like Pittsburgh Penguins, and she'll look up at it and be like, mm, "Fuck that!" And then like change it around and work in some stuff from Pittsburgh and come in with like a completely new logo. And some of them are like fine, but some of them are sick. We should commission this person to make sick logos for them to wear last minute and call up the league and be like, hey, we got you. You know that kid from Instagram? <laughs> we got her. <laughs> I'm, uh, I mean, I'm down. Anything's better than, better than that. So. Speaking of uh, other leagues, there is talk from the, uh, in the NBA about potentially expanding to Canada. Adam Silver saying, I have the quote somewhere, but Adam Silver basically saying, being kicked around, people having their different reactions to it. How would you feel about the NBA adding teams in Canada as a hockey fan? Uh, I, I, as a hockey fan, I don't like it because I want all the attention to be paid from our friends north of the border. I want like 100% of their investment into their hockey team because when things go wrong, and we know that they go wrong quite a bit for teams in Canada, I like when the world and the entire city burns because it's all they have. So that's kind of what I don't want to lose with this expansion. I definitely talk. needed to stay in Montreal. By the way, the, the quote from Adam Silver is, I know there's interest from Montreal and there's still ongoing interest in Vancouver. Obviously, Vancouver uh, wants to get back in the game. Yeah, I love the NBA and I love Montreal and I oddly love the Canadians and just that whole fucking thing <laughs> and how crazy people are. Uh, about it up there, I feel like they're like one of the last remaining franchises where it feels like if the entire uh, crowd wore suits, it wouldn't feel weird. <laughs> they're just like that into like this is our thing and they take it so seriously and God bless them. I love all the media up there. I feel like it would take a little hit if suddenly they're like, what? There's a team that actually has a chance of doing better. Uh, Sean, I had you crunch some numbers. Could you pull up why they want might want uh, more Canadian teams? <laughs> oh, are you sure, Sean? Is that right? Uh, based on my calculations. That yeah. check out? Yeah. The NBA only has one Canadian team. Yeah. And the NHL has how many Canadian teams? More than 15. One. More than 15? Wow. Yep. 
15 Canadian teams. Exactly and not 15. A, not a single Stanley Cup won. 30 teams in the NHL. Half yeah. of them are in Canada. Well, I will. I, I want to <laughs> use this to push back on what you're saying, though, because I, I would say that like the one city that has won that title, Toronto. Like, I don't feel like they Toronto's success damaged that their interest in the Maple Leafs. Anyway. That's no, I mean, they were so, so they were like, see how fucking hard that is. You just get a guy for one year and you win, dummies. You, you, you. I mean, you're not wrong because Toronto was is still obsessed with the Maple Leafs. Will always be obsessed with the Maple Leafs. But when the Raptors were good. Let me tell you, it was a little, it was not as, it's not as hard to make fun of Maple Leafs fans, but they had like that, that card that they could pull a ah, basketball city or like, uh, who cares? Raptors are the best team in the NBA right now. Like, I don't want any sort of out or any sort of get out of jail free card if you're a Canadian team. Yeah, that's fair. I, yeah, I also say like in a league like the NBA where there's so much player empowerment and movement and stuff like that. Like you're already seeing it in the NHL where Americans don't want to play in Canada. James Harden is not going to be like, I need to be a Montreal, blah, blah, blah. Right. Like I'm very, I would be very interested to see how free agency would work outside of basically Toronto. Yeah. You had to get Giannis, who is like a pretty non-typical NBA player exactly. to have a place like Milwaukee have sustained success and you know, like you do the job right as an organization, you get to plant your roots and keep the person. You'd see so many more John Tavares situations in the NBA of like, I'm going exactly where I want to go here. John mm -hmm. Tavares is a bad example because he wanted to go to Canada. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a lot of people. And I think uh, tax wise, it's worse. I think like money wise, it's yeah. worse to in play Canada? in Canada. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, right, because uh, Tavares took it's like, They've got I mean, free health care, though. He blah, got blah, blah. a ton of, well, quit being woke, Pete. <laughs> it's funny. We did get a complaint that uh, our oh, podcast yeah, we were being was political. Our podcast is apparently too political because I guess maybe because I made a joke about the only Joe joke Biden falling asleep at the uh, Golden Knights ceremony. That wasn't even a political joke. That wasn't like an anti-Joe Biden joke. That was an anti-old person joke. An old person joke. Person joke. An old person joke. <laughs> we are not political, just ageist. A little uh, peek behind the curtain. That's right. Don't cancel us for being political. You're We're not. Just, we just hate old people. You're not going to believe this. I actually, I voted for Joe Biden. It's crazy. I will say it. Yeah. Stop being political. Uh, so I was, I was feeling so crazy woke. <laughs> I was like, Lord, forgive me. I'm going to do it. You, 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 you know that, you know that, that Lord, super forgive woke me. I'm about guy. to do a woke. <laughs> yeah. You know that super woke guy, Joe Biden. I've. There's going to be new podcast listeners here. So when we say woke as a joke, woke started, obviously, like woke is one of many things that white people found a way to ruin in an incredible way. It once meant something good. And then white people used it to say, I swear I'm not racist. And then other white people used it to say, I swear I am racist. And now like the, you hear the word woke and you're like, I don't even... I don't know which amount of irony is th this poor word is dripped in right now. Uh, can can Joe Biden, sleepy Joe Biden, as some would call him, can he be sleepy and woke at the same time? Want to get off the politics? I know that that, that was kind <laughs> of a bar because of like sleepy and woke. But so that, that the the complaint, by the way, that said we were too political. It said I listened to sports stuff to get away from politics. No, these guys just couldn't handle this. These guys just couldn't help themselves. This is a podcast for bros. We are. Which I, I, I come around on like tolerating bros, but I was for a long part of my life had no use for bros. I tolerate everybody now and I love everybody, but uh, the the bros thing, you came to the romp. We, we cannot control whether somebody says pussy on our podcast. <laughs> That's right. We actually can. Sean put his foot down. He said, we're keeping it in. Yeah, blame Sean. Can confirm. We said, we, Sean, this isn't the bro. We this, asked isn't the this isn't the political podcast. And Sean said, yes, it is. We asked for five-star reviews. Everybody's declaring their love for Sean. Now we're asking for five-star reviews where everybody says, this podcast is great, but could use a little less uh, politics from Sean. It's kind of heavy on the uh, Seanatics. <laughs> That's right. Seanatics can mean politics from sean or you could refer to yourself as a seanatic meaning like a you're a lunatic for yeah. like how shaka khan fans are shakaholics uh, yes. uh quickly uh some three stars we got some more non-hockey movies suggested 
keep hammering us with those. Oh, yeah. I forgot to say at the time, by the way, The Town. Absolutely a non-hockey hockey movie. Have you seen The Town, Sean? I have, but I'm trying to remember why it's a non-hockey hockey movie. It, uh, the character of, what's his name? Is his name Doug? Is Doug the main character? Uh, I think. I ben forget. Affleck's character uh, moves back to Charlestown and gets into crime because he was drafted by the Avalanche. And he got kicked out of their training camp because he was starting fights with everybody. Sounds like Happy Gilmore. So he became a criminal instead. That is tough. <laughs> it is tough for him. Uh, that's a, it's he not got a, away, though. May contain spoilers. It's not a bad pick. Somebody also said um, Manchester by the Sea. Speaking of the Afflecks. Yeah. That, why, why do they say that was a... I, I've seen Manchester by the Sea. I couldn't I, tell you because I'm never going to see that movie a second time. It, I, I Wonderful like movie. movie. I like that movie a lot. I can never see it a second time. I'll probably watch it again. Too depressing. Michelle Williams should have won every Oscar for just that one scene alone where she tells him, like, hey, I don't, like, 100% blame you. <laughs> blame you a fucking ton. I don't blame you completely. I uh, I go back and watch that scene every once in a while, probably, like, once or twice a year. Really? Just out of, like, a pure, like, psychotic. It's just, like, it's such a great scene. It's such a great scene, but it is, like, extremely hard. The one that I always go back and watch, and you know this, every few months I pull up Craig Ferguson saying he's not making fun of Britney Spears. Yeah. And it makes me feel so good about humans. Here I go. I'm being woke. Uh, <laughs> it makes me feel so good about humanity that someone could be like, hey, there's jokes to be made here. There's also somebody who's not doing well. So there's plenty of other shit to joke about. I'll joke about those things instead. At a time where I'm sure people were – throwing P words at that guy mm -hmm. for being like, make fun of Britney Spears. Be super horrible. Craig Ferguson. Good on you, mate. Weirdly, the Manchester... He's my third star. Manchester by the Sea is like kind of stuck in my life in rotation more than I thought that it would. Like, I've watched that scene once or twice a year, and also I throw out the, uh, the police station scene. Yeah, I don't like that you do I that. I throw out the police station scene like once a week because of the Patriots. Yeah. Uh, you know the one if you've, if you've seen the movie. That, that So like that could earn Pete... Like a negative review, uh, like you'd be like, I'm fine hey, with it. I, think I, it's I thought that I came to Pete's Twitter for uh, to get away from politics, <laughs> and he's showing graphic, horrible scenes. I have a, I have a dark sense of humor when it comes to on, on Twitter. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. So. Uh, all right, Sean, what else did you say you had to say? I'm just, I'm being. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was just like, I don't remember anything. <laughs> all right, we love you. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye bye. <laughs> Y'all silly like the mayor.